Personal Finance PowerPoint Presentation Renters Insurance Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Most of this information can be found at Investopedia Renters Insurance, which you can find online. Take a look at the references, resources, continue your research from there. This is by Julia Kagan, updated February 19th, 2022. What is renters insurance? Renters insurance is property insurance that provides coverage for a policyholder's belongings, liabilities, and possibly living expenses in case of a loss event. So clearly, when we're thinking about renters insurance, that's because we're possibly renting for our living situation as opposed to a home ownership situation where we might be considering, considering then the homeowner's insurance. So it's available to persons renting or subletting a single family home, apartment, duplex, condo, studio, loft, or townhouse. The policy protects against losses to the tenant's personal property within the rented property. So clearly we're thinking about the actual property that is in the rented area. We're not uh, having the insurance on the actual structure itself because we, the policyholder, uh, doesn't typically own the structure. We are renting the structure and therefore having the safeguarding of the things that we own, the things inside of it. The landlord then might have some other type of insurance to guard the actual structure itself, given the fact that they are the owners of it. So in addition, a renter's insurance policy protects against losses resulting from liability claims, such as injuries occurring on the premises that are not due to a structural problem with the property. In that case, the owner's, not renter's policy would apply. So renter's insurance explained. Increasingly, proof of renter's insurance is required by many landlords. So oftentimes when you go into uh, renting a place, you want to live in a place, you got to break down and think about what the rental amount will be. But they also might require the renter's insurance <clears throat> as well, which could be that added cost. So in that situation, when you think about renter's insurance, you're often thinking, well, why do I get renter's insurance? Because I'm required to by in some way, shape or form uh, to get the apartment or something like that. But you also want to know your pros and cons of what you're getting with the renter's insurance and if you're not required to have renter's insurance it still might be something worth considering or it is worth considering and possibly worth uh, purchasing after you considered it so personal belongings within a rented property are typically not covered under the owner's or landlord's property insurance so in other words if the place burns down the landlord's going to insure the actual place not your stuff inside of it uh, and so th therefore if you can have coverage for the stuff then you're typically going to need the renter's insurance. So for example, if a flood or fire destroys all the personal property with a rented apartment, the structure would be covered under the landlord's policy, but the personal property would only be covered through a renter's insurance policy because you have that se two separate people opening two separate components. The landlords can't cover what's inside. Uh, typically with their policy, we need the renter's insurance for that. So without this coverage, the tenant would be responsible for the loss out of pocket. In general, renter's insurance offers three types of financial protection. So we've got the coverage of personal possessions, liability protection, additional living expenses uh, protection. So clearly when you're weighing out the renter's insurance, there's a couple factors that would be involved. You'd be saying, okay, am I required to have it due to the landlord requiring it in this particular place that I'm in. If you want to be in that place and they require it, then you're going to have to deal with some kind of renter's insurance. Oftentimes they have some recommendations in that instance on what renter's insurance they typically work with. And if they don't require it, then your thought process might be, well, do I have expensive stuff that, you know, you know, how, how much of a burden would it be if something happened and I had to replace all my belongings? If I have pretty feeble belongings and I don't have a whole lot of expensive stuff, maybe I don't need the insurance on it. But if I've got a lot of cool stuff, you know, in my apartment place that I, you know, then of course the renter's insurance will be more and more worthwhile as is insurance kind of in general, oftentimes when we're looking at property types of insurance as insurance and possibly liability insurance, right? As wealth goes up, as income goes up, as belongings go up, then more likely that you might need different sorts of insurance. If you don't have much, then it's not a big loss and you might not need the insurance uh, too much. So the following questions will help you choose the right coverage when you are shopping around for renter's insurance or discussing your needs with an insurance professional. Renter's insurance coverage for personal possessions. Renter's insurance covers your personal property from loss due to theft, fire, or other types of 
uh, dis disastrous loss events, you should buy enough renter's insurance to replace all of your personal possessions in the event of a loss event. So the easiest way to determine this amount is to create a detailed list of all your belongings with estimated values. Now this sounds kind of easy. It's not really the easiest thing to do because all the stuff that you bought, all the things that you have, you know that the cost, how much you purchased them for, uh, but even that could be a little bit, little bit difficult and what's their value at at this point in time and so on. But you can get an estimate. You can at least, of course, list out all the items. You might want to take a picture of all the items so you have kind of a, a list of all the stuff that you have in, in the event that the problem happens. So you can choose, uh, and also, of course, if you're going to save that list of stuff, you might want to save it online on the cloud or somewhere outside of the actual place that, uh, you, that you're insured against because, of course, if it burns down and your list burns down, then, uh, you know, that could be a problem, too, if you're using that list at that point in time. Uh, clearly, you're going to use the list, first of all, to kind of figure out how much insurance possibly you need. So you can choose between replacement costs or actual cash value, ACV coverage. Uh, ACV policies pay, for, pay only for what an item was worth at the time it was damaged or destroyed. So, so again, you got this issue of how much you paid for it and how much it's worth at the point in time it was destroyed. Most things deteriorate over time, like depreciate, they go down in value, unless it was jewelry or something like that, which could go up in value, but most stuff goes down in value. And therefore, you would expect if you got the actual cost, it would be, it would be less than possibly replacement cost. So replacement cost coverage costs more, but it will provide a payout large enough to buy a new item to, to replace the old one at the current full retail price. So replacement cost is saying, hey, look, you know, I, got, I need a new one at this point in time. So I'm, you can't just, if I just get the money back that was worth the old one, that's gonna, not gonna be enough to buy the new one. So the replacement cost would be the more money. So that would be beneficial in the event that the problem happened the emergency happened and you needed the insurance, but clearly it would cost more insurance in terms of the premium. If there are uh, abnormally high value possessions, a renter may want to add a floater, which is a separate policy that provides additional coverage for costly valuables if they are lost or stolen. So all like my Van Gogh paintings and my expensive jewelry and, and like chains and whatnot, I don't have any, I don't have any of that stuff. But if you did, You'd, you'd want maybe uh, more insurance to cover that kind of stuff, the fancy stuff. So renter's insurance and covers a policy hold, renter's insurance covers po a policyholder against losses from fire or smoke, lightning, vandalism, theft, explosion, windstorm, and certain types of water damage. However, most renter's insurance policies do not cover floods or earthquakes. So those are the always the two that if you're in a flood or earthquake zone, you're always thinking, okay, do I need more insurance to cover those particular things? Flood insurance is available from the National Flood Insurance Program and a few private insurers. Earthquake insurance can be bought separately or added as an endorsement to your renter's policy depending on where you live. For example, in California, that's where I'm at. I'm here in California then we have earthquakes here. So you might have, you know, you might want earthquake insurance of some kind. Obviously a high risk state for earthquakes. The legislature created the nonprofit California Earthquake uh, Authority to help people get affordable coverage. So you could check, check that out if you're in California. Renters insurance liability protection. So now we got the liability protection component as opposed to the property kind of protection component. The property protection, of course, if there's some kind of event and the property was destroyed, then we're looking for some kind of replacement or recouping of the value of it. And with the liability insurance, we've got some kind of issue that we possibly are responsible for or people are trying to hold us responsible for that is gonna have some possible costs related to it as well. So renter's insurance provides liability protection against lawsuits for bodily injury or property damage done by the renter, their family members, and pets. This coverage covers legal defense costs up to the limit of your policy. So a renter's policy should also include no-fault medical coverage as part of the liability protection. This coverage allows someone who gets injured on your rented property sub to submit their medical bills directly to the insurance company in lieu of a lawsuit. So it might be a more direct way to go. You can kind of <laughs> remove the lawyers, hopefully, and just save a whole lot of money 
which would be great if that could happen. So renter's insurance, ALE coverage, additional living expenses, ALE coverage provides financial protection against an insured's disaster that makes it necessary to temporarily live somewhere else. The coverage will pay for hotel bills, temporary rentals, restaurant meals, and other living expenses while a rental home is being repaired or rebuilt. So in other words, if there's some kind of event that happens that actually destroyed the property or something like that, well, then you could have you could have your property have been damaged and so on and so forth. But you're also going to be displaced for uh, a while. And so they could think about coverage that would help you for your living expenses in the event that you were displaced for a while. So most policies will reimburse you for the full uh, difference between your additional living expenses and your normal living expenses. So you can think about what your normal living expenses are and then the additional living expenses in the event that you no longer have the place and you're dealing with those expenses, which you would expect would be including, you know, where you have to where you have to pay to stay, possibly hotels and whatnot at that point. So there is, however, uh, either a dollar limit on the total amount an insurer will pay or the t or time limit on the ALE payments. So clearly, when you think about these kind of payments, then you might say, well, it's go I'm going on vacation. My place got messed up and I, I, it's insured and I'm going to have living expenses in the Bahamas or something like that. Well, that's probably, uh, you know, something they're going to mitigate against how much living expenses you're going to have and how long, you know, you could be outside the home living, uh, living somewhere else.